Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, June 16th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. We're going to get right into the news tonight. A Kansas mother who used cannabis oil for medicinal purposes booked herself into a jail yesterday. She's facing a lengthy prison term that her lawyer has equated to a death sentence. On Monday, Shauna Banda posted a $50,000 bond after she turned herself into law enforcement on several charges stemming from her use of the plant-derived oil. Banda has used cannabis oil for more than a decade to treat her Crohn's disease, which is an illness that's characterized by inflammation of the digestive tract. Now, we reported about the initial raid that took place on Banda's home in March after her son made some pro-cannabis comments at his school. So then, based on these comments, the police just went ahead and raided her home, took her son away. Now she's had to turn herself into prison. Joining me now to break this story down even further is Alex Jones. This is absolutely ludicrous. You're right, Leanne. This next story just makes me pinch myself and say, did I wake up in 1984? Let's be clear. There's a bad side to the whole drug culture. But that's part of living in a free society. The drug war has only added money to it, made it an underground black market, and empowered the criminals, just like alcohol prohibition did. But if you look at the studies and the numbers, the vast majority of Americans have smoked marijuana or they currently smoke it. And it's clearly not as bad as alcohol when it comes to addiction and health problems. In fact, marijuana has thousands of known positive health effects for glaucoma, for people that can't hold food down, Crohn's disease, you name it. But the system wants to keep it illegal, so they have a reason to throw you in prison. And here is a shocking example of that that was covered by the local television station in Kansas, KMUW. A mom who advocated medical cannabis oil faces 30 years in prison. Our own Adon Salazar wrote this detailed report. Attorney says a lengthy sentence would effectively condemn woman to death. She has Crohn's disease, autoimmune disorder in the intestines linked to vaccines and GMO on record. She has medical marijuana, is public about it, takes the oil for her stomach. Her son did a report on it at school so they SWAT team raided the house. She got out of jail on a $50,000 bond after she turned herself in the second time. Uh, and now she's facing, get this, 30 years in prison for having the marijuana cooked down into an oil that she could ingest. This is insane. More than 20 states have now quasi-legalized it so that people can get a prescription for it. But still, the feds and some states come after people. No one is safe when this is going on. No one is safe when this is happening. This is crazy. Everybody knows that even people that abuse marijuana, all they do is play video games and eat Hot Pockets in their basement. Uh, there's no studies that show they have more car wrecks. None of it. And now police federally funded around the country are pulling folks over and getting cheek swabs of DNA to see if you smoke pot. It needs to stop. The big banks, the government, and others have all been caught shipping in heroin, cocaine, you name it, on record. The reason they hate marijuana is it's decentralized, and it's grown all over the world and all over the United States, and they can't control it. This is how modern slavery has been legalized. And when we come back at the end of the show, after Leanne covers more breaking news, I'm going to tie this in with thousands and thousands of people currently in prison, in jail, for years with no charges or no trial. You've heard about Guantanamo Bay? This is for American citizens that have done things like allegedly steal a backpack. So we'll be back at the conclusion of InfoWars Nightly News with that information. Leanne? It is absolutely really disturbing to see that Guantanamo Bay is making its way here to the United States. We'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up at the end of the show. Stick around. Rob Dew and Josh Owens are going to be joining me in studio a little bit later as well.
From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, we're continually updating you on some of the really bizarre things that they are using to update their drone technology. Well, now we can report that researchers are studying the mating behavior of moths to help build better drones. Now, this new research is using computer simulations showing the mating behavior of these insects uh, that it has implications for airborne robots. They, these, ro these drones are going to fly the sky searching for signature odors. Male moths are able to locate the females by searching out their pheromones, and often they fly hundreds of miles to do so. So this is fantastic news. Now we know that drones are going to be searching out their victims uh, via their smell. But that is not all that they are using moths to do a little research. Now they're trying to find ways to trick moths into sexual confusion in order to prolong the life of clothing and other fine articles. Now this is, uh, they kind of come up with this research in order to protect the fur and feathers from some of the most prized exhibits at the National History Museum. They've had a really bad moth infestation there in London. And so now they're using a new technique called pheromone destruction system, basically making male moths attracted to other male moths. Uh, this is going to stop the whole mating process, stop them from mating and producing any eggs and larva. So once again, using this gender bending technology uh, in order to stop the stop the mating process, the natural mating process taking place. Once again, in studio, Alex Jones. Thank you, Leanne. It was six years ago that I began to really hammer on the fact that estrogen mimickers in plastic liners of microwavable foods, juice boxes, you name it, are confusing the sexuality of male children and changing their development. And when I covered those reports, I showed BBC News articles about plans to spray Iraqis uh, with chemicals that would make them gay uh, during warfare, so all they would, would want to do was have sex with each other. Uh, I showed mainline articles about how the sex of fish and amphibians was being confused by runoff chemicals here in the United States and across the world. I showed the scientific facts, and mainly Democratic Party-controlled media came out in the news and said that I was a homophobe liar and had basically made all this up. Well, look what's in the London Telegraph today. How sexually confusing moths 
could save your clothes from holes. They had a big problem there at the museum, at the Natural History Museum in London. And so rather than using pesticides to wipe them out, they've now began releasing chemicals that are called pheromone destruction systems. And it confuses the olfactory synapses of the moth and makes them attracted to other males. And basically, reproduction comes to a standstill. This is exactly what the Pentagon was looking at doing in 1991 and again in 2003. And the word is some of this was actually tested on U.S. military personnel. So I'm going to explain it to you again. There is an agenda to confuse sexual development, to reduce population, to break up the family as we know it. Have there always been natural uh, cases of people being attracted to the same sex? Yes. Uh, are we all females in the uterus during the first stage of development and then some change into males? Yes. Do I hate people that are, quote, homosexual? No. But I will not use the terms they tell me to use, like gay. Heterosexual means opposite sex. Homosexual means same sex. They want to annihilate science and words and dumb down the public. And it's part of a larger agenda as we're chemicalized, as Aldous Huxley and others wrote about in Brave New World Revisited, that they're carrying out. This is a real program. And as large portions of the male population begin identifying as female, they're attempting to make it culturally cool and culturally push it as something that was a decision that was made that you identified as a female, when in truth it was artificially done and engaged in to the vast majority. You deserve to know why this is happening. It's just like children in the United States are at record levels taller than their parents. It's not from good nutrition. It's admitted that bovine growth hormone in the milk is causing this to happen and has a lot of connections to serious health problems later. And it turns out females absorb the hormone better than males. That's why you see a mom and a dad that are, say, 5'9", mom's 5'4", and their daughter 6'3". You go to the mall, and there's like all these giant young girls walking around you know, a foot taller than their parents. It's from hormones, artificial chemicals in the food. It's admitted that the printer ink used, and almost all printer ink, from newspapers to these printouts, has a strong estrogen mimicker in it. That makes men feminine, it makes women hyper-feminine, and accelerates the aging of your sexual tissues, uterus, ovaries, breast. So yeah, you go into puberty when you're five years old now, many girls do. Some as young as three. The old average was 14, now it's 10. That's not natural, you're hyper-aging. This is by design. Go read the article for yourself. How sexually confusing moths could save your clothes from holes. We're not angry that the moths are gay. We're not obsessed with sex. We're showing you how artificially, just like I pointed out, the frogs are becoming gay from the chemicals. It's not that we're against gay frogs. It's that it was artificially done. And I've used the allegory uh, of the last man on earth that was then turned into the Omega Man where Charlton Heston is trying to explain to the vampires who were turned into vampires from a virus that, hey, I have the cure. He's a virologist. They don't want the cure. They kill him. I mean, before I came in here tonight to shoot this report and to be on the news, Rob Dew made the point that, oh, it's just the birds and it's just the fish and it's just the moths, it's just the frogs. Sure, they're having their sexuality changed, in some cases on purpose, but don't worry about humans. But wait a minute, it's what humans are peeing into the sewage that runs off into the lakes and ponds that's changing their sexuality. I mean, come on, people. We just want you to know this is going on. I'll assure you, I'm not obsessing over who you're dating tonight or what's happening in your bedroom. I don't care. What you need to know is these chemicals 
have a very adverse effect on your health as well, not just your sexual persuasion. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big issue. They can do it to frogs. They can do it to mice. They can do it to moths. They're doing it to us now. It's a real program. In my film, Endgame 1.5, we go over the university documents in the 60s where they laid out this plan. John P. Holdren, the current White House science czar, wrote an 1,100-page book admitting they're putting things in the water and food to change our behavior, our sexuality, our IQs. We're under attack. And I'm not attacking people with lower IQs. I drank fluoride growing up. I undoubtedly have a lower IQ because of it. We've all had this happen to us. If our IQs have been lowered, we don't get mad at somebody warning us about it and say, how dare you be mad at my low IQ? We make sure we don't get more of the chemical and that the children of those people don't get more of it. This is a loving exercise we're engaged in. And the social engineers don't want you to be aware of what's happened. I once had a top globalist off record in closing tell me. I ran into him on a first class flight to New York that, Alex, you think people will adapt and overcome in a good way. We know they'll adapt by submitting to our agenda. And that's just it. I admire the fact that you were hit with chemical weapons at a young age and that you overcame it and, you know, have made something out of it and have your own life. Okay? And if you're a woman that likes women or a man that likes men, you know, whatever. Maybe it happened naturally. It's always happened in a small instance. It's exploding and taking over now, and they're covering it up like it's a social movement and cool when it's deliberate. So you deserve to know about this program. That's what's happening. All right, uh, I'll cover it more on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., but let's... Welcome back. Joining me in studio now are intrepid reporters, fresh off doing some real reporting for Bilderberg 2015. Joining me now, Rob Dew and Josh Owens. So, guys, what are your closing thoughts on Bilderberg 2015? Well, I, I think two things for myself is that if you act like a victim, if you act like a sheep, you will get treated like a sheep. And we didn't do that when the cops got in our face. We put the cameras right back in their faces. It backed them down. And that's something you can use in any situation at any time is just uh, if, if a cop's doing something tyrannical, put a camera on them. And they're either going to freak out or they're going to back away or they'll do both. But that is one way to stop that type of behavior from police. And another thing is we have to stop this notion that our political leaders can get together where we fund the, all the expenses, especially the security, and that they can have these secret meetings. They do it at Bohemian Grove. They do it out here at Bilderberg, wherever Bilderberg's going to be. But the Federal Reserve was started as a secret meeting. Right. And every time they do these things in secret, bad things happen to us. So we have to get rid of the notion that secret societies are okay and that we shouldn't be privy to what these people are talking about, especially when they're elected officials getting together or they've been appointed by elected officials to get together. We need to know what they're doing. If they are under taxpayer-funded payrolls, which almost every single one of those guys were from the United States side, then we need to know about it. Right, That's exactly. It. Well, and of course, the taxpayer funding that goes into that massive amount of security that they set up every single year. Uh, so, Josh, what did you think about that tyranny? Uh, it was it was ridiculous, as everyone saw in the videos. Something I wanted to mention that I just noticed before I came on air, uh, Charlie Skelton just wrote an... Uh, no, actually, the article came out yesterday. It was on The Guardian... Apparently, the there was a shot fired at Bilderberg this year, and it was done by Cobra. Uh, according to his article, when one of the members of Cobra was getting into their helicopter, the gun discharged and shot a hole into the helicopter. So I think that raises the question, um, why would Cobra have weapons that are <laughs> not even on safety getting in a helicopter that are uh, w that have live rounds. There, n nothing was going on there that where that was necessary. Right. The protesters that were out there, there weren't even that many. No. The press that was out there, we know there there was what a couple of international press, RT, maybe one other, The Guardian. Um, it's completely ridiculous, and it's a perfect example of them shooting themselves in the foot with they're hurting their they're hurting themselves covering up for these people. Right. These people are going to damage their lives just as much as anyone else. The people inside that building that they're protecting, they could care less about them, yet they're spending their days protecting them. And I think... Yeah. The, acting like they care. 
-hmm. Exactly, exactly. It was like really concerned. And when you question them on the mountain, the mountain uh, cops on the mountain, they said, there's nothing we can do about it. This is just our job. This is just what we have to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's completely ridiculous. And they are a defeated people. We saw that in the people in the city. We saw that in the cops. What was it like going through all the checkpoints constantly? Well, could you imagine if all the cops just stood up and said, no, we're not going to play security mm-hmm. for, for these people. Well, that's we're how it is here in the it. U.S. as well. You're going to have to pay private security to do it. The police aren't protecting us anymore. They're they're going out and doing the jobs that their politicians are telling the them royalty. to do. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, Go out and get... It's ridiculous. And we have to stop enforce that. Our laws. We have to stop that mindset. Mm-hmm. And the only way to stop it is for the people on that side to stand up. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a universal truth. And that's, I mean, that's where we're at today. We have to keep exposing this stuff so it brings more awareness to it. Um, I was a little disappointed in the amount of press that was there. Yeah. You know, there were some good, some good activists there, um, but I don't think there was enough. There well, was, wasn't it, nearly enough. Yeah, and it seemed like last year we, we saw a lot more coverage of Bilderberg just mm-hmm. across the board, and it did seem that that was really when they um, started putting out their press release and their agenda, and, and here's everyone that's, you know, that we're going to let you know who will be in attendance well, um, and they've taken a step year, back. The reason yeah. they've taken a step back is because they're working on TPP. They're trying to get that passed. There's a little bit of a stumbling block. The U.S. Block election, now. they don't want right. anyone to, yeah, they don't to want see anybody. the ties there. If Jeb Bush was there, we didn't know it. We didn't see it. Well, it was their, their Our, big, their well, big Hillary's, people there. Hillary's PR person. And Jeb's, there. yeah. Yeah. So we know those people were there. Maybe that's how they were vetting them through. Mm-hmm. We know the war in Ukraine was a big issue there. We've I just looked at footage of U.S. soldiers training they're, they're soldiers. And these guys, the, the soldiers they're training look like they're 19, 20, 17, just look like young kids. And they're training these guys to be cannon fodder so the special forces warfare can continue to operate undestructed. Right. So. And then, of course, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, all of these things that are major issues. Meanwhile, as that's going on, uh, the federal government here suffers a major breach of security, gets hacked into. The NSA doesn't even discover it themselves. It was an outside private company that said, oh, hey, by the way, did you know that you've got some malware attached to all your federal files here? And That should joke. freak you out more than the fact that they're uh, absorbing every phone call and every email. Yeah. The fact that they can get hacked and not even know it. Right. Or if they did know it, they just played stupid. I mean, that's another typical government uh, strategy is to play stupid. And they're telling us we have nothing to hide. We should have nothing to hide. So why are we worried? So let us suck up all of your information so these are people that were, you know, being vetted for Secret Service and things like that, having to say what, you know, if they had any drug problems or really personal things. And now all of that information, if they're a spy or someone that's stationed in China, all of that information, they could be blackmailed with that is, is out there now. But we're supposed to trust these people and give them all of our information, all of our data, that it can be breached at any point because, you know what, we've got nothing to hide. Well, so tell me a little bit about this report that's coming up. Well, Josh did the editing. Uh, we shot it right after we did the Alex Jones show, uh, the Sunday edition, that night up in the hotel that uh, Josh and uh, Paul were staying at. And we uh, did a quick interview with Tillman, the guy who actually confronted uh, Mr. Burnaby at the mm. train station. And then while we were editing that together, we went and confronted some Austrian bankers and a media mogul <laughs> who were just coming in for a cup of tea. So uh, is there anything else special in, in, the, I think the, in the video? the report as a whole, I think it's important to focus on guys like Tillman. Guys who aren't afraid to confront people. Guys who aren't afraid to talk to people. And like he said in the report, he said uh, he encouraged everyone to, you know, if you see one of these guys out, go talk to them. Yeah. Right. And he just had an $80 camera. He, it wasn't a big expensive camera. He got right up in their face, didn't stand back, and was asking real questions. And uh, that's what we need more people to do. We need to be lecturing these people. Like I was lecturing the cops up on the mountain, just telling them what they needed to hear. Whether they agreed with me or not, 5, 10, 20 years from now, maybe it'll finally click in when they're totally just under you know squ- living in squalor going god why didn't we do something when we had the chance well, well like Bilderberg the year that I was there when all the cops were protecting the people who were in there deciding the austerity measures and we we kept telling them they're going to take your pension too mm-hmm. you're not safe and literally the very next day the Sunday that Alex went on uh, the BBC there Ed Balls comes out and talks about how they're going to be taking the the pensions from the police and the firefighters and everything. And we're like, see, we told you. And now I I, I bet they felt like such jerks because that's who they were protecting. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Excellent reporting. Glad to have you back stateside and not in an Austrian gulag.
Let's go ahead and take a look at that report, recapping Bilderberg 2015. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Now, this is our last night here in Austria. We're in Mosern, Austria, at the Four Friends Hotel. And I want to bring in Paul Watson in a second to talk about his thoughts about being here, Bilderberg 2015, in the Alps of Austria, and the massive police presence that we had to undergo continuously, day after day, that was then non-existent today, but then reappeared back at the airport, along with the uh, dignitaries and other scum and tyranny and villainy coming in and uh, scurrying away on their planes as they were taking off back to their countries of origin. Uh, we're going to have Mr. Tillman as well talk about his confrontation with Franco Barnaby at the Innsbruck train station. So it was pretty amazing time today. We got a lot of confrontations on tape. So I want to ask you, what are your thoughts? What did you see? And, and how do you feel that the, uh, you know, with the lack of press coverage, mainstream media press coverage, how did the alternative media kind of pick up the slack of what was going on? Well, we basically put the mainstream media to shame, but it wasn't difficult because they didn't actually physically send anyone here. CNN, Fox News, ABC, BBC, some of them wrote articles about it. In fact, Yahoo News made a big joke about it, about the lizard people meeting, but none of them sent people here. None of them sent people to be harassed by police all week, to hike up mountains, to be harassed by the mountain police, constantly checked, constantly under surveillance. And we did, so we're filling the gap for what is one of the most powerful and important conferences in the world today, and that's why it's important that we're here. That's right, Paul, and I think one of the big unsung stories is that TPP Fast Track did not pass in the, in the Congress. I mean, how, how big is that? How, does, how much does that affect Bilderberg at this point? Well, we knew that TPP was going to be up for discussion because Klaus Kleinfeld was there. He is the head of Alcoa, but he's also part of the Business Roundtable which is one of the major lobbying groups for TPP. And the collective wealth that they control amounts to $7.2 trillion. So this is a major player, a major lobbying organization for TPP. The TPA, the fast track that Obama wanted to get through, was defeated. Many expected it to pass. It was quite heavily defeated in the end. So a major defeat for Bilderberg, a roadblock to prevent that agenda, that crony capitalist agenda, which Bilderberg at its heart represents from going through. So a crushing defeat for Bilderberg. Yeah, I agree. A crushing defeat, massive amounts of uh, police brutality going on here. I mean, just in-your-face cops arresting people. In fact, the guy we're going to bring up next, Mr. Tillman, actually shot the, 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 probably the quintessential video of, of a protester being arrested, I think for crossing the wrong side of the street. That was the first video he shot. Now, after that, he didn't end there. He didn't stop, rest on his laurels. He actually went to the train station in Innsbruck and got Franco Burnaby, one of the Rothschild vice chairs here in Europe. He got him on tape. Mr. Tillman, come on in here and tell us about that confrontation. And uh, how, how did this all transpire? Like, you, you, how did you end up at the train station? Well, it was actually all by accident because I wanted to pick up a friend at the train station. So then I suddenly see like a car pulling up in the back of me and it was like a car from the Interart Motel. And someone comes out who looks really familiar to me, his name. And I, I didn't know his name, but I knew it is a Builder Burger, so I got one. So what do they tell you when you come in about Chatham House rules? Is it like, do they say, hello, sir? You're not, a talk, you're not allowed to talk about this at all, or do they say you can give out something, a small thing to the press, or...? Well, the, the, there is an... Normally, when you, when, uh, you participate in these events, there is an unofficial statement, and uh, we should relax to the official. There is nothing secret. You just uh, have to look at the, at the official site of the, of the Bilderbergs, and uh, you will find everything. You will find the teams, you will find the participants, you will find everybody. So what do you say about their influence? I mean, there's very powerful people there. Why does it have to be so secret? I mean, there is no secrecy. It's uh, there is absolutely. No as I talked to the hotel it's, guys, it's just a private meeting. And so, Mr. Tillman, you didn't get intimidated by seeing this. Uh, turd of the Rothschild dynasty walking up to a train station. You actually went up, you followed him several times. You had to go back and uh, move your car because it was in a, a no parking zone, but you stayed at it. You educated him over 12 minutes of footage of you confronting a Rothschild. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel pretty proud. I mean, it's like 
the message I want to give out to the people, I always say that on my channel, that you have, don't have to be afraid of these guys, you mm -hmm. just go to them, they're just normal people. Like the politicians I interview in Germany, they're just without protection, so you can go up to them, maybe even ask them for an interview, they're sometimes pretty friendly. So there's really no reason to be scared, of because like you said, they are scum, so they should really have more respect for us, for normal people, so you should have no respect, just get in their face and tell them your opinion. Exactly, exactly. And then while we were editing the footage of the Barnaby confrontation, we're, we're finishing it up, and I look up, and I see three guys walk in. At the tail end of this, this trail of scum was Oscar Bronner, publisher of Der Standard. And I said, I said, I said to you, I said, there's Oscar Bronner. And before I could say anything else, you'd already grabbed your camera, stuck the memory card back in it, and you were up confronting more of these banker scum. Tell me who you confronted the second time. Uh, the, the guy was Rudolf Scholten. That's a guy I actually knew by accident. He's famous in Austria. I'm from Germany. Mm -hmm. But he is the head of the Austrian Central Bank. The name is Control Bank. It's just on the list. I don't know. I guess it's the Central Bank. Maybe we should, we should check that out. But um, he was on the TV in the ORF. That's like state TV in Austria. And he gave an offic official interview about the Bilderbergers for 12 minutes. And it was like not really a hard interview. But of course not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but he asked him some questions and he didn't really answer. And the only critics he had about the Bilderberg group was that there's not e enough women there, like some pseudo-feminism argument, like, but it wasn't really going down to the point what's really decided there, but that's where I knew him from, and you, you knew the other guys, so we both confronted them, so it was really a great job, so. Yeah, we went out right on the, uh, on the upper deck, right on the tarmac, uh, basically, and uh, I got in Oscar Bronner's face and, you know, asked him, uh, you know, told him who I was, introduced myself, and said, are you going to come clean with the agenda of the Bilderbergs? And he said, oh, what, uh, uh, pretending like he didn't know what I was talking about and then I went back because he left and he went and got a cup of tea and I said look if you don't want to get harassed like this just come clean he goes oh I am clean mr. Bronner you would not be uh, harassed or asked questions as much if y'all would just publish what really happens at Bilderberg you realize that uh, I mean there's no reason to take 2,000 troops and close down an entire mountain for a supposedly private meeting do you think that's ridiculous? That's your opinion. Uh, You're entitled but to you, your opinion. But so you think that's okay? I think you should come clean and tell everybody what really happened to Bilderberg. I am clean. All right. Don't worry about that. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Your thoughts on Bilderberg 2015? I mean, it was now, it was like they ridiculed themselves because they had like all this big police and now we had the most confrontations ever. I mean, we had good confrontations last year, 2014, with Luke, Peter Sutherland, mm -hmm. but we had maybe more confrontations this year and we also had them all at the airport which wasn't happening last year so it's totally ridiculous because they had all this big security the hotel was totally saved up by 2100 policemen and now we finally just got them at the train station so it's 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 ridic ridiculous and it cost six million dollars at least for the um, Austrian taxpayers. For so. the taxpayers, exactly. And then we went up uh, this afternoon, this evening, we went to the Inner Alpen Hotel. We drove up, two cops at the front, let us through, no big deal. We drive up, we park our cars, we go take the elevator up to the first floor. Uh, even the, the maitre d' down there says take it zero. We get up to the top. Uh, we're uh, <laughs> intercepted by a man named Abraham, who then tells us that we're to leave at this point. He calls the hotel manager, who then comes out. He's very rude. He's got his uh, bald-headed cop buddy wearing the trendy, you know, stonewashed jeans. He pulls out his policia ID and tries to intimidate us that way. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, without discussion. Otherwise, so I don't want to. Uh, Under discussion with any one of you. You have to leave now. The ground, the hotel, the whole area, you know? Okay. Understood? No. Okay, please. I think I understand means something different. Okay. So, yes. Where are our cars parked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong direction. Our no, no, our cars parked. You go out here. Yeah. You go out yeah. here. One, how many cars? Two. Two. Okay, two guys go and take the car, the other ones go out here. Okay. 
please. We had a confrontation up on the mountain, up on uh, Huey Munde, with uh, with the mountain Alpine police. And you know, they came out of the woods. They they took our uh, our, our uh, passports. They took photos of them. They took photos of our um, hotel. Mm -hmm. They took photos of our press passes. And then they follow us up to the top. And then they try to tell us where we need to go walk. They said, go up, walk, hike, hike over there. Go hike over there. And you know, we're just trying to get a drink and eat, eat some lunch. And I had had enough of it. So I started, you know, just basically dictating to them who they're governing, who they're trying to protect. And it really pissed me off. And one of the guys actually got so mad. He goes, we have no choice. We have no choice. Sure, sure. But these people do have a choice. At the end of the day, they can say no. If they all stood up and said, we're not going to guard these people, this is ridiculous. We have, we have no choice. No, you should Be stand up. Now. You should stand up for yourselves. No, no, no. no. You should. I'm no, no. serious. Uh, Arrest Kissinger. Down. You'll be a hero. No, 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 no. I don't have any guns. Yeah, Completely I, unarmed. I, I'm also. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They're afraid of real questions. And they, you notice, they didn't want to answer any real questions. They didn't want to speak to you. They wanted to try and ignore you, but they couldn't at the end. They just, they had to at least say something to you. And that's where I think the power of the people lies and the power of the camera. And tell people about, you know, you don't have the most expensive camera in the world. Tell people about your camera. I mean, I have like a 80 bucks camera. It's like really cheap, but the sound works. It's okay. You got to get close to the faces. Yeah. And I had some really big successes before with this camera. I interviewed like a guy of the Green Party, a guy of the Liberal Party, and they, some people totally embarrassed themselves, like the guy of the Green Party. I asked him about Bilderberg, and he said, um, guys like me, we are conspiracy theorists, and we should oh, go yeah. to mental therapy. Th therapy. Oh. So, and this got like 50,000 views and everyone hated him for it. So it was like really great and uh, it's easy for everybody to, to do this. So this is, should really be like the first response of citizen journalism you know, to do this and mm -hmm. to, to ask these politicians. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, everybody has their duty out there to get out there, get a camera and get in people's faces, especially when it's, you know, the, these elitist and these bureaucrats and public servants that are supposed to be working for us, but they're not. They're taking contributions from giant corporations. They're taking their orders from Henry Kissinger, whatever it may be. It's your duty out there to get active and get involved, shoot video, post it on the internet, even if your friends don't like it. That's not the point. The point is doing what's right. It's not about, oh, what do people think about it, okay? Because that's why we're here. We're not here because people think we're great, especially the cops. I mean, we were looked down upon by the police constantly, day in and day out. Some of the people here, oh, why are you here? You're causing a nuisance. We're not causing a nuisance. We're not setting up roadblocks. We're not putting 2,000 troops on the streets terrorizing hikers, okay? I interviewed hikers from England who were aggressively approached by the police while they were hiking in the woods. Totally ridiculous, total overkill. That's the main theme here at Bilderberg 2015, police overkill, and it can happen anywhere. So you need to be prepared. You need to be ready for the next Bilderberg, the next big event when these elitists get together. Be ready to confront them, because that's what it's all about. This has been Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. And if you're watching this message right now, you are the resistance. Well, after a catastrophic breach of government employee records, the White House has ordered federal agencies to fix these cybersecurity flaws without delay. So, of course, that means they're going to use this hack to impose more draconian measures. Now, this is what the White House has announced today. It's desire to dramatically accelerate implementation of multi-factor authentication for network access. So what does that mean? It's basically White House speak for personal identity verification smart card and possibly a biometric one. Now, uh, you'll recall that in 2014, the Obama administration rolled out its national strategy for trusted identities in cyberspace. We did a full on report about this. It's a system that would replace passwords and other internet login procedures with a smart identity card, a digital certificate on their cell phone and other sort of schemes. And this would basically pave the way for an interoperable authentication protocol. It would work for any website and it would link all of your accounts. The scope of this program would eventually be expanded into an ID card to access the internet itself. Of course, this could mean needing government permission in order to even access the internet, being able to keep people off the internet. And it could also build a case for DARPA slash Google exec Re Regina Dugan's ingestible biometric chip. 
which would just make our entire bodies be a biometric password of sorts. Now, they're definitely pushing for this. We've been seeing this kind of on the Bilderberg agenda, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, seen it many times as well in the past where they're exploiting hacks to push these draconian measures. And a lot of the time, it's the NSA that is behind these hacks. A hacking scandal is rocking Major League Baseball today. St. Louis Cardinals under investigation by the FBI. Trace Gallagher has more on this breaking story. Trace. Gretchen, this is huge because it would be the first case of one professional sports team hacking into the network of another team. And like every big scandal, the big question right now is who knew and when did they know it? So far, officials have not said which Cardinals employees are the focus of the investigation. Takari Jackson here going to talk about some hacking news. Now, I let off with that MLB clip because, no, it's not the most important story in the country, but it does give context to what we're talking about because for some reason, people really don't seem to care too much about hacking or surveillance unless it relates to a celebrity or a baseball team. Case in point, nobody really cared about storing their naked selfies on the cloud until Kate Upton got hacked, but that's another story that we actually did talk about a, a few months ago. But now we'll talk about the NSA hacking and the things going on. So federal workers have had their sensitive information hacked by uh, some news outlets are saying it's China, but I definitely take that with a grain of salt because you guys remember last year they were blaming all types of things on North Korea without any real evidence at the time. So now we have the article on Infowars.com. Obama pushes Internet ID verification in response to NSA hacking. They don't have the capabilities to protect their own information, but they want more and more of your information. You know, case in point, Obamacare. They want to know everything about you, uh, not only that, but any other type of database when they can't even keep their own information private and secret. And also look at, uh, who was it, Petraeus from the CIA. You know, they were able to get his information and find out what his dirty deeds are. So you have to definitely take that into account when you put your stuff out there. So it's very interesting that, you know, as much real pertinent information that affects your personal life is out there but it was a skit on i believe it was the daily show when they said snowden would have woke up more people if he would have convinced them that the nsa was bad because people could see your naked selfies so things like that and you know it's you have to laugh about it to an extent but it is serious and getting worse because we have more and more technology you have smart TVs that can monitor your conversations. I believe it was two or three years ago, CNN ran a piece talking about put a piece of tape over your TV or your or your laptop. It just takes somebody to, you know, find the right exploit and then leverage it. For those of us who are a little freaked out and maybe don't don't trust all these updates, what's the easiest fix? So one of the things that you could do with the smart TV, which you can also do with your laptops, is just cover up the camera. Of course, your smartphones have back doors, um, video game consoles, recording your habits, all types of things. They even have beds that can monitor your sleeping habits, all types of things out there taking track of your personal information. So be careful what you put out there and you can find more reports on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Well, the Senate voted overwhelmingly today to ban the use of torture. Never again will prisoners be subjected to waterboarding or rectal feeding or other extreme and brutal interrogation practices that we have been exposed to now. This was in a 78-21 vote. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle supported an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act. They're going to limit the entire U.S. government to the interrogation and detention techniques that are outlined in the Army Field Man Manual. This, this measure is also going to require the government to update the Army Field Manual every three years, make sure it's, it's complying with U.S. law and reflects current evidence-based best practices for interrogation. And it's also going to require that the International Committee of the Red Cross be allowed prompt access to anyone that is detained by the U.S. government. So that's very interesting because what about people that are being detained right here in the United States without trial indefinitely? Alex? Thank you, Leanne. Finally tonight, I want to talk about something that is so bone-chilling, I personally have trouble believing it. But as a news hound on air for 20-plus years, I know that this, quite frankly, is just part of the landscape of our country. We've all read about third-world countries and ancient medieval times when you would be thrown into a dungeon and forgotten about. 
and grow a big, long beard. Living off scraps of food shoved under the door. But that doesn't happen in America today, does it? Well, the truth is it does. And under the whole police state launched after 9-11, we were told that even American citizens overseas could be disappeared into ghost sites or black sites and that torture was a good thing to get confessions. Well, now Senator Ted Cruz and Rand Paul have come out last week and called for an end of indefinite detention for citizens in terror-related cases. And that's all fine and dandy, but what about for U.S. citizens in the U.S. who've done nothing but be under suspicion of a DWI or suspicion of Medicare or Medicaid fraud or suspicion of stealing a backpack? These are just three cases of thousands that are on record. Currently, thousands of people are estimated by Amnesty International and others to be in U.S. jails and prisons without trial in some cases for more than eight years. Let's look at three cases right now. I've interviewed the lawyers for Dr. Charles T. Sell, a successful dentist in St. Louis. The New York Times reported on it back in 2002. I first talked to his lawyers years before that. He spent more than 15 years in prison because when the feds came and said that he was guilty of Medicare and Medicaid fraud, he said, you're crazy. They said, no, you're crazy because he wouldn't cop a plea. The feds have a 98% conviction rate. And he was locked up again for more than 15 years total until he, quote, agreed to take drugs to treat his psychiatric condition. Once he did that, it destroyed his brain to where he couldn't even testify. And then they kept him in prison. Here's the New York Times. Jailed man fights efforts to medicate him for trial. There you go. Let's continue. Here's another article. This is out of NBC News. Man left in solitary confinement for two years gets $15.5 million settlement. You notice these people are ever every race, color, and creed. He had to pull his own tooth. He was in solitary confinement and basically went insane and is still basically mentally ill to this day. He was pulled over in Donna Anna County and taken to jail. He was never given a trial and put in solitary confinement for two years. This is all admitted. We're just giving you a few case point examples. Here's one that just came out in the last year. Khalif Broder, who died this year, he just committed suicide in 2015. They'd written about his story in 2014. New Yorker Magazine and others have broken it down. He had no criminal record. They accused him of stealing a backpack. They had no proof. He wouldn't plead guilty, so they kept him for three years inside Rikers Island, one of the roughest prisons in the world. And the videos have been released now in the lawsuit of him being beaten on an almost daily basis by the inmates because the guards basically let him do it. The guards choking him, beating him for no reason because he was peaceful and wasn't violent. And he was so mentally shattered after three years, no charges, no trial, no nothing, he committed suicide just last week. Those are three cases to humanize this. This is going on all across America where extrajudicially this type of stuff is happening. Take what's happening with the family courts. They've been set up in the last hundred years as eugenics courts where the CPS can take your children if your 11-year-old is seen by neighbors playing basketball at 5.30 p.m. in the backyard. That happened just last week. Or if you let your kids camp out in the backyard in tents, something I did many times with friends over, they claim that's neglect. Or your 10-year-old's caught playing in the park across the street. They can frame anything as neglect. It's up to their discretion and take your children away. I'm not demonizing even the bureaucrats of the system. This has been set up centrally by the social engineers, and then the governments locally are following the orders via the federal money. If you want to know who's to blame, look in the mirror, as V says, know that we need to get angry, we need to learn our rights, and take our county and city and state governments back. The globalists are number one afraid of us taking our counties and cities and states back because they know that will be the legitimate government system 
that no one can argue with to say no to the federal government itself that's been taken over. All right, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Realize that other political prisoners are languishing in jails all over the place without trials and that they use Guantanamo and stuff as a distraction from what's happening here. I say shut down Guantanamo, shut all these black sites down today because they legitimize the idea of what's currently already going on. The IRS can take your house without a judge or a jury. They're already saying cash is illegal without a law. Tyranny is really taking the gloves off right now, and it's time we take the gloves off politically as well. And in closing, I want to tell all the bureaucrats and enforcers and others out there something. We're going to lose everything if this tyranny keeps growing. The bottom's falling out right now. Everybody can feel the danger, not just intellectually see it. Let's stand up and reform our society. Let's do the right thing and admit that giving government and corporations limited power was a bad idea. It's a bad idea now. It's a bad idea in the past. It'll always be a bad idea. All right, that's it. You've seen the facts. Check them out for yourself. I'll be back on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, with the worldwide syndicated broadcast and the nightly news. I'll be back here in 23 hours tomorrow night on Wednesday. Never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance.